email destroys emails after they're sent. The FCC lets AT&T buy DirecTV. Chrysler fixes a scary car vulnerability with USB sticks and more. It's Friday, July 24th, and this is Crunch Report. Hello, everyone. Just hiked up to the top of the Hollywood Hills. It's pretty warm up here, but luckily we brought our lights. Welcome. It's an L.A. version of Crunch Report. Okay, so let's talk about email. One thing about email, besides it being a soul-crushing piece of antiquated garbage, is that once you send an email, you really can't ever take it back. There's also the issue of sending confidential stuff over email. Remember the Sony hack? That's why a new self-destructing email service called Dmail, which works with Gmail, may be the savior that we all need. With Dmail, you can revoke access to any email that you send via Gmail at any time, and soon you'll be able to stop recipients from forwarding your message as well. Now, you might be saying, Sarah, you're dumb. Revoking an email has been possible for a long time. You're not wrong, that's true but it doesn't work that well. Microsoft Outlook users at a company that uses an Exchange server can recall emails, but it doesn't work with addresses outside the company's domain. And Gmail's own unsend feature is limited to 30 seconds max. So it's like, you know, a trigger reaction, but if you think about it two minutes later, too bad. With Dmail, which works through a Chrome browser extension, you can destroy a sent email whenever you want. And recipients don't have to also be using Dmail in order for it to work. If they don't have the extension installed, they'll get an email that says, this secure message was sent using Dmail. To view the message, simply click the button below. If you revoke an email, the recipient gets, this message has been destroyed and is no longer available. A Dmail iOS app is set for launch in August with an Android release not far behind. So two days ago, TechCrunch reported that the news discovery app Flipboard had raised 50 million more dollars after authorizing shares earlier this year. And today the company has confirmed the news telling TechCrunch that JP Morgan was the sole investor and that the money will help build out the product and team. Did they ever say anything else? Like hookers and blow? No, they never do. Flipboard didn't provide valuation for the round, but according to the investment filing, it could range from about $800 million to $1.32 billion. Recently, rumors had swirled that Twitter might be interested in buying Flipboard after Flipboard held discussions with other companies like Google and Yahoo. Flipboard CEO Mike McHugh used to be on the board of Twitter, so there's sort of a connection there. And he even had his name kind of thrown around as a possible candidate for Twitter's currently vacant CEO slot. Flipboard now has 72 million monthly active users after seeing a 75% jump in the last six months due to web user growth. Pretty impressive. The company said that it sees anywhere from 150,000 to 200,000 activations every day around the world, with most users accessing Flipboard on mobile devices. So did you see that Wired story back on Monday titled, Hackers Remotely Kill a Jeep on the Highway with Me in It? Scary, right? The story was that Jeep's computer was vulnerable enough to be hacked from the outside while being driven. That is terrifying. Today, Chrysler, maker of Jeeps and other types of cars, has finally taken action and announced that it's recalling, I'll put that in quotes, I'll explain in a minute, 1.4 million vehicles because of what happened with the Wired reporter. His name is Andy Greenberg. The recall doesn't mean that Jeep owners have to return their vehicles. They're all going to be sent a USB stick, I'm totally serious, with a software update to fix the exploits that the hackers attacked. It's not just Jeep owners either. Other models that need the update include certain uh, Dodge Vipers, Chrysler 300s, various Ram pickup trucks. And Chrysler estimates about 1.4 million vehicles in all. If you want to know if you're affected, a website's been set up to enter your car's VIN number and get a USB stick if you need an update. So we have an app death announcement. Very sorry to report that Frontback, the camera app that combined the front-facing camera and the rear-facing camera on a smartphone to make sort of an awkward hybrid front-back image, is shutting down its service. To be honest, I'd forgotten about it. Perhaps you had too. But Frontback's story started really well. The founders joined us at Disrupt back in 2013 after amassing 200,000 downloads really quickly. The company raised about $4 million from a variety of investors, had some celebrity users, Ashton Kutcher, Square's Jack Dorsey, but ultimately kind of fell by the wayside. It's hard out there for an app. In a message to users, Frontback's team says that the app will shut down on August 15th and data will be available until September 15th, so save your masterpieces while you still can. The FCC has approved AT&T's $48.5 billion acquisition of satellite TV provider DirecTV. 
With this deal, AT&T becomes the largest paid TV company in the world with just under 26 million active subscribers. The acquisition approval is kind of interesting following the breakdown of the Comcast Time Warner Cable deal that was called off earlier this year. A lot of people compared both of these. But the FCC does have some requirements for AT&T. The combined entity must deploy high-speed fiber optic broadband internet access service to 12.5 million customer locations, as well as to E-rate eligible schools and libraries. It also must obey net neutrality provisions and must allow the FCC to review any future interconnection or peering agreements. And that is the report for today. Woo, it's hot up here on the hill. I'm going to go down and get myself a drink at the Roosevelt. I'm Sarah Lane. Crunch Report airs Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, right here on TechCrunch.com. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday.